Isso. A chemical engineer. A pastor. A psalmist. A conference speaker. And a televangelist. Highly sought after. The founder and senior pastor of Eternity Network International, ENI. The convener of Koinonia. A place where people come to experience worship, the word, miracles and love. Experience true intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Learn to be with Him. Be like Him. And represent the fullness of God's life on earth. A worshiper and lover of God's presence, and as well as an end-time general, who unites the body of Christ with a prophetic mandate as well as an apostolic calling. To take us to another level in glory, please join us as we make welcome. God's choice son. Apostle Joshua Nimark. this opportunity to really truly appreciate Pastor Emmanuel thank you thank you and your dear wife I sincerely appreciate you for this time please let's honor them let's celebrate them thank you Hallelujah. and then I want us to in the same vein even though our fathers and our senior pastors have been recognized but i'd like us to please stand one more time and just honor the fathers we honor you sirs, the pastors in the name of jesus christ amen it is please let's have some silence so that we are able to hear the word of the lord praise the name of the lord do you believe in prayer can we just lift our hands and our voices to heaven and ask the Lord to visit us tonight the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion go ahead and pray you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever i am afraid i will trust in you i will trust in you Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. Father, we are gathered tonight as proof that we trust you. We are gathered tonight as proof that we love you. We are gathered tonight as proof that we believe in you lord i pray that in this conference you will visit us tonight in a mighty way let the sick be healed oh god let the oppressed be delivered oh god may your fire fall in this place and i pray in the name that is above all names that as the word of god comes our ears our eyes and our hearts are open to receive Amen. jesus we declare that you be glorified tonight for in jesus name i pray Amen. god bless you and please be seated by the way is it all right if i just use a few seconds to really bless and wish Pastor Emmanuel, a very, very happy birthday. 
Let's honor him. Thank you. Amen. We love you. We honor you. And we celebrate what God has done and is doing. And our prayer as the body of Christ is that you will go from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Amen. While I was praying for this meeting, this morning I had a very interesting vision and in that vision I saw it was like Ezekiel 37 and I was given a picture of what was happening whilst Ezekiel, you know his encounter bones began to come to bones and one of the things that the Lord spoke to me from that vision in this meeting is that this night many many people will be stepping into strange restorations please I want you to believe it believe it with all your heart that there are things that have left you for some of you decades by the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that God is bringing them again to your life. Joel chapter 22. Please let's get to the word. I'd like you to be sensitive. Be sensitive. Sing hallelujah. Sing. Just help those under the anointing please sing hallelujah to the lord i'm just seeing the smoke of his presence across his place sing hallelujah sing hallelujah sing hallelujah sing Christ is reason sing Christ is reason sing Christ is reason from the dead Spirit of the Living God we pray that whilst the word comes move in our midst and let it truly be that this was a night of encounter in the name of Jesus Joel chapter 2 from verse 25 Joel chapter 2 from verse 25 and I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten the canker worm the caterpillar the palmer worm my great army which i sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty and shall be satisfied and shall praise the name of the lord your god that had dealt wondrously with you the last statement says and my people shall never shall never let me use this opportunity to speak that everything that followed you here representing shame and representing reproach i stand upon this altar in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may shame and reproach be rolled away forever May shame and reproach be rolled away forever. The Bible says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That was his end. But at the beginning, the Bible says, Because the mother bore him in sorrow, she named him Jabez. But a time came, he was angry. He said, It's time for me to go forward. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast again oh, let me speak over someone it may be that there are limitations that have followed you for years in the name of Jesus Christ who is also the lifter of men I prophesy to you 
everything tying you down so that the only thing moving is your age nothing else is moving in your life i command let it be broken now 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 He called Lazarus out from the grave. He gave an instruction. He said, lose him and let him go. Let me speak to someone here. Whatever has tied you in the name that is above all names, by the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, I declare, be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. Please sit down. The Bible, the Bible lets us know that in our walk with God, please pay attention. There are systems of advantage that can be introduced into the life of a believer that gives him an edge over life and over circumstances are we together now in the dealings of god with men and captured all through scripture from genesis to revelation we see that there were men who were under all kinds of circumstances but that somewhere along their lives a system of advantage was introduced into their lives and it began to change the narrative of their lives here's what the Bible says for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purposes why is it that all things can work for good because regardless the situation and the circumstance in god's economy he sustains the ability as the el shaddai to introduce what i call systems of advantage there is nobody's life that is in advantage by default are we together now yes the first of that system of advantage being salvation that when you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ according to the authority of scripture the Bible says that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son then the Bible lets us know that you become a partaker of God's life that is the first system of advantage that comes into your life John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy the Bible says it says but I am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly Amen. are we still together but then there are other systems of advantage that are spiritual arsenals that God had made and put in place for believers so that no matter and regardless what happens in your life by the introduction of these systems of advantage you eventually emerge victorious it is it is on the strength of these systems of advantage that we show the all-surpassing dominion power of the Christ so that regardless my background regardless what it is that happened or did not happen in my life once i come to christ there is no such thing as too late because there are sufficient spiritual arsenals that can be introduced into the life of a believer to begin to correct even age-long anomalies are we together now an example of these systems of advantage is the mercy of god one of these systems of advantage is the favor of god one of these systems of advantage is speed and acceleration all these are provisions that were captured in the economy of god to the intent that when and if any man decides to walk with the lord 
and begins to grow through knowledge you can access these truths and then the reality of the divine life starts speaking because you engage these things there are people for instance who come from backgrounds where they are saddled with all kinds of yokes and curses and by default these individuals become victims of life victims of situations and circumstances and even if they get born again there are still constraints that their lives constraints in their lives by reason of the advantage the devil had there has to be a way of correcting that anomaly are we together now there are people who by reason of activities of witchcraft did not have the privilege say to go to school early and to move forward early so already by default they are already retrogressed and delayed in life is there a way that God can help those people to catch up in destiny oh yes there is the name given to that mystery is called speed that God can take the 10 years that were wasted and transfer it into a man's future and make it happen in one day are we together now listen when we say we are victorious we are not just saying it because Jesus died and resurrected just religiously we are saying it because we are aware of the spiritual arsenals that the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus has provided for the believer today it is on the strength of these truths that we make our boast in the Lord are we together now yes. so we know that we are victorious we know that in spite of what happened or did not happen a woman may be barren for five years ten years even 20 years if that woman gives birth to a child yet yeah, thank God for the child but time has gone if she's to give birth to four children one by one by one by one at what age will she be done giving birth so when God gives her quadruplets he did not just give a child he carried years and brought it in nine months are, are you seeing that now I'm saying this because tonight there is something that is about to happen to someone here in the name of Jesus the son of the living God that the things that have 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 been um, a, a disadvantage to your life we have come to introduce a system of advantage into your work that will begin to so change things that those who knew you will say is Saul when has Saul also become one of the prophets please sit down hallelujah are we together once upon a time Moses went to meet his half-brother Ramesses who had now become the Pharaoh of Egypt to advocate the exodus of God's people and they came out of Egypt and he began to pursue them they stood before the Red Sea there was no provision to move forward again Egyptians behind the sea in front by what architectural mechanism were they going to build a system of safety to cross over everybody says systems of advantage and in Exodus chapter 14 when you read from verse 13 and 14 and 15 Moses had a strange encounter with God he said fear not Moses is speaking now a visionary leader he said stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he show you today for these Egyptians whom ye have seen today you shall see them no more forever listen as at the time he was saying this he did not even know the dynamics of how it will happen all he knew was that the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace then verse 15 the Lord said to Moses wherefore criest thou to me he says speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward hold on how do I go forward when I know that a sea can swallow anything I hope you know that it was not just that the sea parted the gap the land had to rise to their level to be able to walk because even if the sea parted it would still be a depth that they would not cross 
Listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing now. And then Moses received that instruction. And when he stretched forth his rod, the Egyptians saw a dimension of God they had not seen among any of the gods of Egypt. The God who with the breath of his nostrils he parted the sea like doors, hither and thither, and lifted land to their level on dry ground. When they crossed over, Pharaoh attempting to cross over was swallowed by the sea. Miriam was too grateful. She sang a song. She said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. One time, they became hungry. Very hungry. And God said, I want to show you the systems that are available in this kingdom. Manna, not seeds for you to sow. There are times God can give you seed and wisdom to sow. But there are times the urgency requires bread. You don't have the time to start sowing and waiting for harvest. God can send both seed and he can give bread. He can give seed to the sower, but he also can give bread to the eater. It is true that God can give you a job and you can start saving for five, ten years. But there are times that God can give you the keys to a house in one day. It is the same God doing it. Please pay attention. Then they stand in front of Jericho a fence so fortified the bible says five chariots could stand on it imagine a fence that five chariots could stand on it even if it collapses it's still a fence again and joshua was led to introduce another system of advantage the bible says jericho was shot nothing could come out of it nothing could enter it and they went round singing praises every day once and on the seventh day they went round and he said when you hear the sound of that trumpet that you lift up a shout and the bible tells us that the walls of jericho it did not just fall it sank the power of god and one of these systems of advantage tonight that the one lord wants to introduce is called the mystery of restoration ha! the mystery of restoration please look up scattered through scripture the bible tells us that men can gain things but also men can lose things is that true we see that people lost things even believers lost things in scripture for instance Saul the son of Kish they lost their donkey the father's donkey and they went looking for it jesus himself in giving his parable helping them understand the system of the kingdom spoke about the parable of the lost coin so we know that it is not unusual for things to be missing it is not unusual for us to lose things but then the bible gives us another interesting angle to it that men can lose things but men can lose time the loss of time according to scripture is truly what we call loss if you lose things you can get it back but when you lose time because destiny is measured in time write it down the unit of destiny is time that means whatever you give your time to you give part of your life to whatever takes your time has taken a part of your destiny are we together now the unit of destiny is time and so there are times you can lose things sadly after the pandemic or during the pandemic many people lost money many people lost jobs many people lost businesses so we know that men can lose things but it is more deadly when you lose time when you meet a dying man 
and ask him what is your greatest desire he will not say more houses he will not say more land the greatest request of a dying man is more time isaiah 38 the bible lets us know that hezekiah was sick unto death and isaiah came to him and said put your house in order god has brought a word you will not recover from this sickness the bible says isaiah turned his face to the wall and his prayer was a request of time time from the human standpoint is irredeemable when it passes it doesn't go back it only goes forward and that means whatever can eat up your time has taken a part of your destiny so when the bible says i will restore the years you need to understand the gravity of that miracle restore years how do you restore years when a man gets born again at 40 respectfully speaking and at 50 yes he's done well to get born again but in truth as far as destiny and impact and fulfillment of life is concerned time is gone you will need to introduce this system of advantage in your life is that true yeah. restoration is a very powerful mystery to restore means to take a person or to take a thing to its original position where it would have been if there were no constraint listen carefully there is a difference between restoration and progress let me have two people can i have two gentlemen two well-dressed gentlemen please come let me use you for an example just two and that's fine we have this one more person watch this now i like to teach illustratively so that you will understand now this is what i want you to do walk together all right walk slowly now these guys are at the same pace in life and destiny are, are we together now they are going to walk towards me but along as they walk i'm going to make one of them to be delayed and then eventually i'll ask him to start coming i want to show you the difference between progress and restoration are we together now walk gently gentlemen so born on the same day and now for whatever reason stop moving can you see this is where he would have been so he's behind now now keep moving this is progress not restoration because he will never still catch up now let me show you what restoration is when god picks him and brings him here do you understand that now so that when you look at his life you cannot find the gap that delay created again i prophesy to you again in the name of jesus christ everything that has represented delay in your life here at this conference may my god push you forward in the name of jesus christ thank you please sit down please sit down so it is true that we can lose things the concept of losses is a concept that we do not want to hear anything about not in business not in, nobody wants to lose losing is dangerous no one wants to lose a loved one no one wants to lose money no one wants to lose honor no one wants to lose respect no one wants to lose your valuable why do we protect our cars why do we protect our homes because we hate losses let's discuss the subject of losses for a while is god helping someone there are five reasons why people lose in life remember we are teaching on advancement but we have to deal with the subject of delay and retrogression there are five reasons from scripture why men lose number one very quickly the first reason why people lose in life is because of lack of discernment write it down please the lack of discernment lack of discernment can cause you to lose hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 we'll walk through a few scriptures hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep remember jesus was giving us the parable 
of the sower is that true and he said the seed is the word of god the soil being the hearts of men and he said for all the soils seeds were sown but satan came immediately and he caused losses and for those that satan came they were the ones who did not pay attention to produce understanding from their hearing genesis chapter 28 and verse 16 very interesting rendition this just a background for that scripture very quickly this was jacob remember the bible tells us that jacob came to a place called loss and he laid a stone for to sleep in the night are we bible students and then the bible says while he slept he saw a ladder he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth and the heavens angels were ascending and descending but do you know none of them were coming to him they were moving close to him taking messages to those who were calling them and he was there and never partook of that angelic activity and when he woke up verse 16 please he made a very instructive statement he said surely the lord is in this place and i knew not i did not discern that i was not just lying down on a floor that there was an altar here my father had a covenant with god i came close to the place of covenant it would have blessed me it would have lifted me but lack of discernment did you know that one of the highest indices according to scripture that measures maturity is the ability to discern strong meats the bible says are for them who are of full age is that true who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern discernment is powerful the faculty of perception this comes through prayer this comes through study of scripture this comes through exposing yourself to the atmosphere of the holy spirit in these end times you need discernment if you do not want to lose your bishopric to lose your destiny it takes discernment are we still together the first reason why people lose we are dealing with the mystery of restoration lack of discernment number two the second reason why people lose in this kingdom is carelessness 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 is the second reason why we lose revelation chapter 3 please and verse 11 revelations 3 and verse 11 it says behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown you can lose your crown hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 hebrews 2 and verse 3 please give it to us hebrews 2 and verse 3 the bible says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation negligence carelessness many people have lost precious things because of carelessness they have lost valuable destiny relationships they have lost opportunities for instance how many young people had the opportunity they heard that a job offer was there at a platter of gold their uncle said send your cv and they carelessly assumed that the job will always be there carelessness is dangerous we must obtain grace tonight to fight carelessness like you fight the devil you can lose things you can lose years because of carelessness number three are we still together the third reason for losses in this kingdom is called ignorance of the laws of life ignorance of the laws of life comma the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom ignorance of the laws of life the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom psalm 82 and verse 5 listen this world operates by laws there are laws of life there are laws of destiny there are laws of the kingdom your ignorance of those laws can cost you so many things including your life let me give you an instance someone can decide right now to end his life by going to stand in front of a moving train is that true he violated the laws of life 
someone can be part of a bad relationship that leads him into destroying a precious destiny that's violating the laws of destiny but there are people who can give themselves over through ignorance and the devil can take advantage of them and destroy and waste their lives ignorance listen this is a kingdom that operates by light it takes spiritual illumination high level illumination psalms 82 and verse 5 the bible says they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says i have said ye are god and all of you not some are children of the most high the tragedy is in the next verse but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes ignorance is costly we must contend for light we must contend for spiritual illumination is that true it was this passion for light to supply spiritual intelligence to the body that made paul to make that statement he made in ephesians chapter 3 please give us ephesians chapter 3 from verse 2 and 3 then we'll jump to 9 and 10 2 and 3 if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which is given me for your sake now to you word how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words now when you go to verse 9 he was granted grace what is the grace the grace is to make all men see to open the eyes of men take away ignorance and verse 10 is the reason to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God dominion is the resultant effect of the comprehension of the principles of the kingdom dominion is not an impartation there is no anointing in scripture for dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of God we have beautiful media people here doing an excellent job of coverage while I teach they are operating by knowledge not their size not their gender it is the level of illumination they have as far as this activity is concerned we must contend for mastery and fight ignorance like we fight the devil are we together number four is god helping us we're discussing losses because when you want to make advancement advancement happens in the absence of situations that retrogress or impede you to the degree to which that impedance is taken away that is the degree to which it can be said you are advancing number four the fourth reason for losses is abuse and misuse the fourth reason why people lose is abuse and misuse matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 jesus is teaching now and he's teaching about what we have come to know as the parable of the talent follow carefully for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country it says who called his own servants and delivered unto them goods so he gave them something and unto one he gave five talents to another two to another one the bible says to every man according to his ability not according to his love for them at the end of this parable you see he was correct for that allocation 17 the bible says let's go back to 16 25 verse 16 25 verse 16 help us media we're still discussing the parable then he that had received the five talents he went and traded with the same and he made them other five talents and likewise he that had received two he gained also two the tragedy now 18 but he that received one went and did what dig the earth and hid his lord's money you bury seeds not talents talents are not for the ground 
talents are for multiplication you sow seeds the earth is for seeds not for talents and yet this man took something that was supposed to be you were supposed to do business with it abuse and misuse is one of the reasons why people lose when the owner of the talents came back to demand accountability in his arrogance he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you do not sow and so i thought to do you a favor i buried it here is your one talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant he took that one talent and he gave it to the one who had proven faithfulness in stewardship the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful are we still together tonight abuse and misuse it was dr miles munro of blessed memory who said when the purpose of a thing is not known he said that the abuse of it is inevitable the word abuse is an abbreviation for abnormal use when a thing is not used within the boundary of its purpose is called abuse are we together so a quick recap before i mention the last point the reasons for losses in life number one lack of discernment number two carelessness number three ignorance of the loss of life the loss of destiny the loss of the kingdom number four abuse and misuse number five tests and trials the fifth reason according to scripture why men lose it can be it may be because of tests and trials job chapter one please from verse nine the bible clearly gives us a a biblical rendition of the life of this man called job the bible testifies that he was a man who feared god and eschewed evil please give us verse 9 follow carefully as i read then satan answered the lord and said does job fear god for nothing hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side hast thou not blessed the work of his hands my god so satan can give this kind of testimony about a man satan is testifying before god that i came close to a man and i found that man so fortified both him his house and his endeavor next verse now put forth your hand and touch all that he hath, and he will curse you to the face the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Sin 2. Tragedy strikes on earth now. And there was a day. May that day never come to your life. But for this man there was a day. When his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. That means they were responsible children. The elder brother was already established and something happened there came a messenger unto job and said the oxen were plowing the asses feeding besides them be patient and the sabians fell upon them and took them away yea they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you imagine this kind of news next verse while he was yet speaking there came another and said the fire of god is fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep the servants consumed them and i only am escaped to, to tell you while he was yet speaking my god there came another and said the chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon your camels they have carried them away yea and slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you as though that was over he was yet speaking there came another and said this one is not just animals again now your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and behold there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead 
and I am escaped alone to tell you two more verses then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and worshipped after such a news next verse please we're finishing at 22 and said naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave and the Lord had taken away blessed be the name of the Lord 22 hallelujah and in all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly listen to me there are times in your life and my life I know this is not a popular message but there are times that events can happen around your life to the end that the worship of things and your connection to things be broken God's obsession is not to take away things from us he desires that we prosper but there is a problem when those you see the thing with things is that they also want to be lords so when they come to your life they don't remain where you kept them they also begin their manifesto in your life to ascend to a point where they take God's throne there is a system for managing those things God enthrones himself in your life by withdrawing from your life everything that tries to be him so if it is your intelligence if it is your uncle your connection there are people who come to church and while they are saying understand faith they are laughing but they don't really care because there is an uncle who had given them assurance whenever you are ready you come and just when you are ready the uncle relocates to Canada let me tell you what happens to you when you come for service under that condition whether there's praise worship or not you will lie down on the ground that's the real day you will start learning faith because at that point now you are being forced the human spirit is stubborn it does not easily bow to the Lordship of Christ not in the presence of things not in the presence of many the Bible says it this way Apostle John was teaching us in his epistles he says love not the world neither the things that are in the world the word love there is the Greek word eros is an affinity an ungodly affinity that can affect your relationship with God there is a jealousy dimension of God that will not share accommodation with every other thing he created it's an exclusive position so whilst he blesses you with prosperity increase fame anointing whatever it is he doesn't have a problem with you having those things but there is a side effect to men who have not been worked upon by god it does not mean you are bad it's a weakness in humans you must pass through a season in the spirit where god steps back and allow those things that have attempted to be savior and lord and el shaddai you see the futility of them outside of the influence of God the end is not to destroy you see when you are passing through this season with God it looks like he's nonchalant over the things you are losing he's concentrating on your training because when you do learn restoration is still possible so while you are saying God are you not seeing what is leaving me he's saying in my world not there's no such thing as something living I am working on you there are people who stand and brag based on their certificates based on their uncles their aunties did your bible not say some will trust in horses it says some trust in chariots but we we who have been cultured to understand we trust in the name that anything minus the name of the lord is a disaster it's only a matter of time a man can vow and say come and meet me tomorrow and get a contract and between that night till the next day and Ahitophel comes to him and gives him a counsel and by the next day he says I can't remember telling you such a thing listen believers it is true that there are times that tests and trials can cause us to lose things albeit temporarily James chapter 1 Apostle James was teaching us from verse 2 are we still learning 
james james chapter one apostle james is teaching us he said my brethren so he's talking to believers in christ he's not talking to the heathen my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations support your confidence with this revelation knowing this there is something you need to know that gives you confidence in the midst of plenty and in the midst of nothing it's hard god called you to be a kingdom financier and gave you an instruction to carry all your money and bring to church you brought the money and sold and thought by the next day the heavens will open and for one year you are now living from hand to mouth he does not hate you he's teaching you faith there will be a recompense so that you can stand holding an account with one billion and yet it's not in your heart jesus is still lord that is the morale of the training can i tell you this i came here sensing in my heart that within your region there are people who have lost things and even lost time there are people as soon as you finish school you wanted to get a job like every other person god says stay back and everybody is moving forward and even you you don't know the name of what you are doing with god god what are you doing with me can i tell you this you must understand that when god is silent his silence is a language every time god is silent he's saying you are in the school of the spirit don't be embarrassed you will cry it's true you've often heard people i hope god is blessing you tonight there are fathers of faith here veterans of the gospel your fathers in the land you ask them they will tell you their journeys they will tell you they will there, there as a man of god there are times you will be going through things yourself you will counsel others and you will receive a word for them but for you a word does not come and yet god will demand obedience and compliance you pray for someone and there is an open door but there are bills waiting for you and you are saying god i'm serving you faithfully i'm teaching you what the silence of god is saying you are in a school while you are crying heaven is clapping and saying don't give up because the bible says let us not be weary in well-doing it says for we will reap well-doing is a seed is god speaking to us there are various reasons can i tell you this <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 40, don't turn there, just write it for reference. The Bible talks of a prison. Look up, please. Joseph and the wine presser and the baker met in one place. The name of that place is the prison. The prison is where both good and bad people meet don't judge everybody in the prison they are there for various reasons there are some who are there because they defaulted but there are some who are there because they are being made to become saviors the prison is where both good and bad meet the cross is where both jesus and the thieves meet be careful when you judge people while they are going through seasons you do not know the reason why they are going through it Are we together in that same prison there was joseph the righteous there was the wine presser the butler the defaulters they were all there the way to the throne is the cross the way to sit over egypt is to pass through the prison let me speak to you many of you admire greatness you admire great people i want to tell you there is a mystery that not many of them will tell you sincerely look beyond the crowns and the glamour there are scars that are testaments of endurance they lost to gain if you want to gain in this kingdom you must be prepared to lose losing is how we gain are we together because you will not appreciate restoration until you understand the idea of losses there are people right now who have lost things you lost a job because of your integrity you made up your mind you will not compromise you will not bribe and you lost not every loss is proof that god has left you there are losses that are scars of honor 
symbols of endurance is God still with us tonight mm. let me give us three keys for restoration and then we'll pray someone's breakthrough is coming now please pay attention keys give us access as big as a door is it's a small key that opens it how many of you have stood before a giant door simply because a key that could enter your pocket was missing you stood before that door helpless as adult and matured as you are a small key was missing and it kept you grounded keys are powerful they can open great doors even ancient doors number one what is the first key for restoration please pay attention number one the first key that leads to restoration according to scripture is called self-examination the power of evaluation the power of self-examination you want restoration in your life your family your business self-examination second corinthians 13 and verse 5 help us media second corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 read with me please if you're a christian and you can see it projected ready one to read examine yourself it says uh-huh whether ye be in the faith the instruction is examine yourselves to examine yourself means to find a place and sit down and engage in deep contemplation there are many people who pray but they do not think thinking is a miracle the bible says god is able to do more than what we ask or think you've heard me say it in my teachings that both your prayer and your thinking are warriors there is a prayer warrior there is a thinking warrior god answers all the requests they bring to him you can pray well but if you do not think well you may never come out of certain tragedies the psalmist would write a song and he would write under sila pause and think deeply is that true the bible encourages believers to think to sustain times of deep contemplation for instance in philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true honest just pure lovely are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise it says think on these things self-examination luke chapter 15 popular story we read three verses from verse 17 luke 15 from verse 14 this was the story of the prodigal son please keep the scripture there just as a background let's go to verse 17 okay well keep it from verse 14 remember the young man who had access to his father's wealth but he wanted ownership is that true and the father gave him he did not think well if he thought well he would know that access is better than ownership because access you have you have the abundance to you minus the responsibility of maintenance but ownership you have both access and the responsibility of maintenance in this kingdom we don't own anything owners are rebels we are stewards my car my house my children then you maintain it in this kingdom we have access from genesis you may freely eat but it's not your own but the the carnal man wants it in his name ownership the young boy had access but he wanted ownership father i'm of age let it be in my name luck started when access switched to ownership and the young man went as a result of his careless thinking his life deteriorated he lost everything are we still together to a point where someone who was in a place of royalty was now feeding with the swine 14 please and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want we're reading to 20 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine what a what a decline and he would not fain 
and he would not fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself the bible did not say the holy ghost spoke to him the bible did not say a counselor advised him it is within the power of the human spirit to sit down and say why is my life like this listen let me tell you there there is for many of you here this is already a word for you don't allow yourself to just keep growing old and things are just happening you need to sustain the power of contemplation i say father why am i always in lack why am i always fighting the seed for an answer is a question you do not deserve an answer until you have a question is that true for someone here you need to sit down and think why am i failing in this business lord you give me a ministry influence zero doctrine zero salvation zero something is wrong the bible says be still and you will know there is a level of knowledge that comes when you are still our generation sadly is a busy generation thank god for technology but if not managed it can be the demon that distracts you out of advancement is that true all kinds of things clamoring for your attention no champions and great people those who make advancement in life are people who understand the power of deep contemplation they lock themselves you are a visionary leader millions are depending on the ideas and the decisions that come out of that contemplation you cannot be careless you cannot be rash obtain grace in jesus name to sit down quietly some of you after this conference you may just need to go excuse everybody out of your house or your room or your office and just sit down quietly no television no radio no internet holy ghost i'm here there has to be a way out of this speak to me go and ask inventors as champions as visionary leaders ideas are birthed in the place of contemplation where they sit quietly there has to be a way to this business there has to be a way to raise this capital there has to be a way to ministry spirit of the living god i open up my faculties to your influence and whilst you are there suddenly from heaven something comes and graduates you to victory for the next 10 years are we blessed the power of self-examination the power of contemplation this is the first key to restoration number two the second key that leads to restoration is brokenness psalm 51 verse 17 brokenness because there are times you notice out of the five reasons i gave you five reasons for losses four of them are reasons that authorize satan to come and destroy your life so when you want restoration psalm 51 please and verse 17 there are times you need to be broken brokenness suggests taking responsibility brokenness suggests saying look the way things have gone around my life there may be need for repentance there may be need for openness of heart lord i repent you spoke to me in a dream my pastor gave a message i ignored him i ignored the instructions of the authorities over me there must be need for brokenness the young man when he came to himself here's what he said let me show you what brokenness is how many hired servants has my father and i am here feeding with the swine here is brokenness i will arise and i will go to my father i cannot advance into prosperity but i can advance to the man who can help me there are two levels of advancement advancement to god then from god advancement to destiny you cannot advance to destiny when you have not advanced to god when you find yourself in defeat don't advance to money don't advance to fame don't advance to a blind restoration there is only one person who deserves your advancement i cannot go back to my wealth i cannot go back to my reputation but i can go back to my father 
God is speaking to someone here. You were once on fire. You once loved God. Now it looks like you have lost everything. You were once a visionary businessman until you joined some so-called club or association that just derailed your values. It may not be easy to get that business back overnight, but there is a father who is waiting for you. Notice the Bible never said the prodigal son met the father at home. The father already started moving too. He will not meet you at your mess, but you will not meet him at home too. You will meet him somewhere at the point of your obedience. I will arise, he says, and I will go to my father. When I see my father, I will not just shake him and say, hi, dad. Mm -mm. I will say, father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son, he says, but take me as one of your servants. When the father saw that there was brokenness already, he didn't even talk to him about the issue again. He held him and embraced him and restored the signet ring, a symbol of royalty. You are now back to my fold. Listen to me. Every time you lose in life, businessmen hear this. When your business crashes and everything goes down, don't say I'm looking for money to go back. Uh -uh. There is only one person you go back to. Father, Abba, the source the sustainer until you sort it out with God you cannot go back anywhere you used to be a man of God on fire now you have backslidden prayer life zero word life zero you're not even sure you are saved you don't go back to ministry you go back to father it is from father he reallocates you to your inheritance is somebody learning now we're dealing with restoration genuine biblical pathway that leads to restoration it cannot be in the absence of brokenness from self-examination to brokenness lord i'm sorry i was not a faithful tither i was not a giver i did not support your house you gave me two billion naira i misused it jumped around with psycho fans who promised to be there now everything has gone bad don't say the ideas are still in my head it's just to get a loan i assure you you will recycle that pain again life is a patient teacher it can repeat the lessons for as long as it will take for you to learn are we together what do you gain in the place of brokenness a contrite heart what do you gain in the place of brokenness you reprioritize god above everything i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever lord Forever, I love you. Forever, I love you. Forever, Lord. Listen, let me show you the position of brokenness. This is it. Yes, I know you are a CEO, but life brings you to a point where you are no longer ashamed. When your knees can touch the ground, then your head can wear the crown again. When your knees can touch the ground in brokenness. Samson was one person who lost his estate in destiny. Let me show you how that restoration happened. His eyes, his symbol of light had been taken away. And while they put him between two pillars to mock his God, he prayed one prayer. I may not have the opportunity to live again but oh God even in death give me the honor and the privilege of valiance let me do much for you and they did not realize that while they were laughing at him his hair was coming back can I tell you this rejoice not over me my enemies no matter what happened to your yesterday I bring you a word of hope Jesus died but he only died for three days let me encourage someone here yes your prayer life has gone down yes i know things may have gone down it may have been your fault your carelessness wrong associations mistakes but let me bring you a word of hope at the scent of water at the scent of water while you are laughing at jesus who died 
there is an angel leaving heaven to come and open the grave while you are laughing at the dead jesus he did not die forever he only died for three days he only died for three days and while they were laughing at the one who died an angel came the hymn writer says up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph all his foes he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign if christ arose you can arise did you hear what i said businessman hear me man of god hear me those following from whatever nation watching hear me there is hope in this kingdom one of the systems of advantage is that no matter what goes wrong once there is brokenness you have planted the seed for continuity of your destiny can i give you an advice great leaders no matter how bad people are if you find genuine brokenness i show you people who are still usable but no matter how good people are if you do not find brokenness that is a disaster only waiting for time of all that Saul was he was broken when he fell before that light who art thou Lord he said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest you cannot kick against the bricks and his heart was open when Peter denied Jesus he was broken even the judas you talk about judas was so broken he did not spend the money brokenness is powerful it vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer you can fast you can pray you can walk in church if there is no brokenness you cannot go far with god I think we should turn this into a prayer in one minute whilst you are seated cry to the god of heaven lord grant me a broken spirit the pride and the arrogance that is rebellious towards god give me the malleability to repent the ability to not be ashamed that when there is a default in my life and my destiny and my losses come as a report card letting me know that i need to retrace my steps Pain is a letter from your future to your present warning you that you need to make adjustments in your life. Is someone praying? Please pray. Be like that prodigal son tonight for some of you. Hallelujah. Now listen to me, listen to me, I still have two more points and then we're going to pray. But at this juncture, my spirit is fired up and I want to make an altar call. You are here and you've heard me speak. And whilst you heard me speak, the Holy Ghost began to tell you, it's time to win this war of destiny tonight. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Running to Jesus is like running to receive an award not running to a funeral hear me there are people up the balcony across the aisles and maybe even outside online following you know that the first restoration you need is Jesus Christ nobody will force you but I believe with all my heart there are people who need to make it right or there are others who say apostle I remember giving my heart to the Lord but the way my life is now things have gone haywire wherever you are as I count one to five, as our Father will always do, I like you to leave your seat wherever you are and please run and come and stand here unashamedly. You are standing before Jesus. One, are you celebrating them? Champions Cathedral, come and stand before Jesus, the God of your salvation. Please stand for space, stand, celebrate them as they come. It's time to win that war. Is this how you celebrate salvation here? Okay, those outside, you can create a space for them outside because of that. Those outside, hear me please. Those who are coming from outside, let's have some ushers or counselors. Just create a space for them where they can stand. Keep 
coming come to Jesus come to Jesus come to Jesus are you coming to Jesus I have to pray for you before we continue I love I love I love your presence I love I love I love your presence I love I love I love you Jesus I love I love I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. Listen. Look at me. My brothers and my sisters, some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from him. So that you have come to Jesus who is the Lord of your salvation. I like you to know that you are not a rebel young and old for some of you you've been having dreams the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you for some of you he carried you and brought you here do you know why more than just making heaven there are destinies that are connected to your obedience he brought you here to make you if Billy Graham never got born again in that crusade ground there are millions today who would not make it because of him if Reinhard Bonke never made it to Jesus can I tell you this many of you are here like the prodigal son tonight it is within your power to come to yourself and make up your mind I'm tired of this kind of thing I cannot waste the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross can I tell you this every one of us including myself had to stand before the Lord of our salvation to make this decision this is not a funeral you are standing before Jesus the only thing I want you to do is to mean seriously what you are saying don't come and stand here just because of emotions let it be from the depth of your heart the Bible says whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away listen to me my brothers and my sisters you are here because there is a beautiful destiny yes because you live Jesus, I leave. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you leave, Jesus, I leave today. I leave to pray. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Your father is here. Like the prodigal son, when he came to his father, the father embraced him. I am still Abba, your source your sustainer please lift your right hand high to the heavens above your head and I like you to say this after me passionately Jesus is here for some of you in your tears and your prayer is the salvation of millions for some of you in your tears and your prayer is the finances that will fund the gospel in these end times there are apostles here and prophets and evangelists and pastors and businessmen and politicians custodians 
of the destinies of many take seriously the decision you're making say after me lord jesus say it again passionately say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word like the prodigal child i have come to you just as i am unable to help myself but i believe in your love i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood for me i believe you resurrected for me tonight i make jesus my savior my lord and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i also receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare that from today and forever i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father i present to you the ones jesus died for jesus when you hung upon that cross these ones together with all of us were worth your death your blood like trophies we bring to you abba these ones who have come back home according to the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over your life i commend you therefore to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit that is able to make you and mature you and to make you a useful battle axe in the hands of the lord every guilt every shame every past leaves you now and leaves you forever in the name of jesus christ amen and amen. amen now very quickly before I, they're returning back to their seats okay now this is what i want you to do all of you the teaching is still on so even whilst you are there please lend your attention but there is a, a counselor waving the placard just turn to the back and you will see him what i want all of you to do is just follow him together in concert as we clap for them there'll be a group of people very briefly very briefly they will attend to you and you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them champions cathedral is this the best you can do no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Sing it one more time. There's no shadow you will lie up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Hallelujah. Can we take the third key? Just help those who are crying. Can we take the third key? Whilst you are taking them, counselors, just help them. Let's make it snappy so that they can be back because we are soon to pray now. The third key is knowledge. The third key that controls restoration. Are we still together? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So number one, the power of self-examination self-evaluation number two the power of brokenness the third key that controls restoration in this kingdom is knowledge proverbs chapter 11 please and verse 9 help us media proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9 the bible says an hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor the b part says but through knowledge shall the just be delivered through knowledge shall the just be delivered this is a kingdom that operates like i stated earlier operates by light is it possible is it possible to have excuse me 
is it possible to give the new converts the forms and then they can fill it on their seat and then when i'm done praying i can still request that all of them get back will that be fine will that be fine sir or well anyway just i just thought so that it doesn't bring any distraction praise the lord let's continue knowledge everyone say through knowledge shall the just be delivered one more time through knowledge shall the just be delivered there is a relationship between knowledge and victory there is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance there is a relationship between knowledge and restoration the same way ignorance leads to losses knowledge can lead to restoration isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 a scripture i love to quote so much here's what it says arise shine why for your light is come not that your light is available it's always been there but when it comes to you it sustains the power to make you arise and to shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i wish we can have the amplified rendition the amplified says let me quote it for time it says arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new life arise from the prostration the depression that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life oh beautiful we have it here it says be radiant with the glory of the lord why for your light has come everyone say my light has come, my light has come. prophesy it over your destiny my light has come prophesy it over your family my light has come light is powerful is it not light that turns night into day what did your bible say about the night that weeping is related to the night time it endures for the night it says but joy it ties light to joy for as long as there is night in your life weeping continues but the moment illumination light comes to you then you arise in joy you need to pant after knowledge knowledge of the ways of god knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom you must access wisdom by light scripture says talking of wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice it says it says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness job 29 the exploits of job job was recounting the basis for his victory what was responsible for him being the greatest man in the east please give us job 29 the first four verses are we still together tonight moreover job continued his parable and said oh that i were in the months past he says as in the days when god preserved me when his candle everybody say light when his light shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness there are two kinds of light you need to advance the one that shines on your head and the one that shines on your path the one that shines on your head is for knowledge the one that shines on your path is for direction job said this light was on my head and was on my path for he says as i was in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle in fact let's extend a bit go ahead and read when the almighty was yet with me and my children were about me when i wash my steps look at the fringe benefits of access to light i wash my steps with butter the rock poured out oil rivers of oil uh-huh it says i went out to the gate through the city when i prepared my seat in the street what happened the young men by reason of this light they hid themselves and the aged ones stood up the princes refrained talking and laid their hands on their mouth ten the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth when the ear heard me it blessed me and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me just stop there the exploits of light you want advancement and even restoration it is at, it's at the mercy of the lights that you have this beautiful auditorium is well lit 
both your led screens the tvs and then the auditorium why because there's sufficient light if you put a candle here it's not light enough to turn the night into day you need high level spiritual illumination are we together the last key that controls restoration is the prophetic hmm Isaiah 42 and verse 22 the prophetic was given by God as an instrument of restoration Isaiah 42 please pay attention we're about to pray we're about to pray Isaiah 42 and verse 22 media help us let's read together can we read ready one to read but this is a people robbed and spoiled uh-huh they are all of them snared in holes they are hid in prison houses they are taken for a prey and none say it delivereth for a spoil and none say it restore restoration must be spoken to happen it says they are taken for a prey and there is no prophetic voice that can speak and say restore restoration second kings chapter 6 and verse 1 a classic expression of restoration hallelujah someone's life is about to change Amen. and the sons of the prophet said to elisha watch this now behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight or small for us let us go so this was an intention to go forward but something happened are we together let us go we pray thee unto jordan the place of breakthrough and take thence every man a beam and let us make us a place there where we may dwell and he said go ye when he gave that instruction one said be content i pray thee to go with thy servants and he answered i will go so he went with them and when they came to jordan they cut down wood the bible says but a tragedy happened listen carefully now but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said alas master i am in trouble i've lost something now my sincere intention to go forward has brought me trouble and that axe was borrowed watch the prophetic the man of god answered and said calm down you are safe the prophetic is still within your reach where fell it ha, the lord is speaking to someone where fell the relationship where fell the favor where fell the open door and he showed him the place please keep the scripture and he cut down a stick and cast it in Peter and the iron did swim and he said take it up to thee and he put down his hand and took it I will restore through the instrument of the prophetic and ask head heavier than water but under a certain condition I, I, I prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God you now see what happens when our father Baba Deboye would stand and say in the name of Jesus casually speaking everything you have lost let it be restored and people say amen and people return with testimonies and say my child who has been missing for 10 years let me tell you this i know that the prophetic may have been abused here and there but when the prophetic is administered within the balance of scripture it is powerful no man can rise beyond a certain threshold until the prophetic lifts you I tell you this I had the honor and the privilege of meeting our father again not too long and when he was praying and speaking over my life 
I knew it was coming from the depth of his heart. He sent everybody out of the room and began to speak from the depth of his heart. I knew he was not just advising, he was programming realities. Can I tell you this? As powerful as Jesus is, he walked under a closed heaven for 30 years until a prophet opened his heavens. Your Jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until he met a prophet called John the Baptist. Even if you are a midwife, when you are pregnant and you are about to give birth, another midwife will have to help you. Hey! Hear me? This is where the arrogance of our generation has pegged men. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred by another. Fire is about to fall in this place. Listen to me. Many of you have lost. Please take it hard for me listen carefully there is a prophetic word that i want to bring and then we'll pray i will not take too long we'll be done shortly please be sensitive now i just sense angelic activities in this place nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 11 nehemiah chapter 5 Nehemiah 5 Champions Cathedral The city of Wari South of the Niger Hear the word of the Lord He said restore I pray you to them Even when Even when Are you reading with me? Not tomorrow Restore even this day Their lands Their vineyards their olive yards their houses a hundred part of the money and of the corn and of the wine and of the oil that he exact of them listen please look up every time many of you are businessmen many of you read economies there is always whenever there is a taking it leaves someone and goes to the hand of another is that true who did your breakthrough when it left you where did it go because the bible says when you catch a thief he doesn't only restore he restores tenfold ezekiel 37 i was taken we're still buttressing on this prophecy this is the prophetic word the lord gave me tonight nehemiah but hear me the hand of the lord was upon me we're reading ezekiel 37 he carried me out in the spirit and set me down and he showed me a valley full of bones bones means they were once an army but something happened he caused me to pass by them they were very many and they were very dry that means they had been there a long time verse 3 he said unto me son of man champions cathedral can this business leave can this family leave can this anointing be restored the prophet was honest he said lord with this situation i'm seeing only thou knowest and then he spoke to him and he said to me prophesy he said to me prophesy he said to me prophesy verse 5 cause breath to enter you so that you will live verse 6 beautiful and i will lay sinews and i will do all of these things go to verse 7 that's what i'm looking for he said prophesy and this verse says so i he said deliver so i i'm here today because god sent me if he says prophesy 
then we must prophesy if he says restoration then we must decree it are you ready to pray father i step into everything i have lost everything that has left me left my family lift your voice and pray spiritually financially in ministry in business in career are you praying are you praying inside outside RCCG Champions Cathedral The City of Worry Lift your voice and declare Restore Restore the grace Restore the favor Restore the lifting Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. 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 My God, my God. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. But now, oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. I like you please listen listen there are a few we have a few minutes i don't intend to delay us especially because of our fathers but the hand of god is upon me now praise the name of the lord hear me there are people here and i'm seen by the spirit there are people here there are yokes that have tied and kept individuals listen to me and families the Bible declares that now the Lord is that spirit and that where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty there are individuals here the only thing growing in your life is your age nothing else is growing I want to pray for you right now listen as I pray for you the power of God is going to come upon you we may not be able to do that for everybody but I want you to bring them out here let's just have a few ushers whether you're an usher or not just join them there's a reason i want to pray for them we can, because this night except god is not god that whatever has held you down in the name of jesus it must give way are we together i stretch my hands right now at the count of three i declare that anyone here under the sound of my voice who has been tied down by witchcraft tied down by all kinds of yokes 
join my faith with the fathers of faith and in the name of Jesus at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus don't come out at random don't come out at random the power of God will bring you out in the name of Jesus just bring those under the anointing one two you shout Jesus three be delivered right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I decree and declare bring those under the anointing Jesus the name that is above all names bring those under the anointing let them go in the name of Jesus let them go release their destinies release their destinies by the power of the Holy Ghost every plot that is not of God I come by the rod of a higher priesthood let there be deliverance now let there be emancipation now in the name of Jesus hallelujah listen I'm praying for you there are families Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18 he says son of man what seest thou and he said I saw four horns 19 he said these are the horns that have scattered Judah your praise scattered Israel your covenant scattered Jerusalem your peace there are horns that fight families I'm praying again that every power sitting on anyone's destiny you're going to shout that name again in the name of Jesus be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now release families release destinies release families release destinies release families release destinies we cost you by the God of heaven we cost you by the God of Joshua that rides upon the wings of the wind hear me please listen if there is any family here that has been tied down in one position as i declare upon you i'd like you to begin to receive and say i'm moving forward i'm making progress i declare right now every family that has been tied down in the name of jesus go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward no delay go forward restoration in the name of jesus Let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is rising in this place tonight. Hear me. Listen. All of you who are in front here. Listen. Hold on everyone in front here I declare that everything that has tied you by the God of heaven I command it to leave you now leave your family now if you are in business here lift your hands I want to pray for you Pelas Alas, master, it was borrowed in the name that is above all names. Everything that has tied you down to bring reproach to the name of the Lord upon your life. I stand here upon this exalted altar and I declare to you, come out of every debt now. Come out of every loss now. Come out 
of every death now come out of every loss now i speak to you advance 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 go forward advance in the name of jesus hallelujah now listen to me please just two three minutes and i'm done the bible speaks about a man in the book of esther called mordecai mordecai once saved the life there are two people who did well but were not rewarded in scripture number one was joseph he helped the wine presser to interpret his dream and he said when you are restored please tell the king i'm innocent the man added two years to joseph's pain a man's memory a man's forgetfulness can multiply your times of pain until god as an act of his mercy brought a dream to pharaoh and the wine presser said i remember my wrong the second person was mordecai he saved the life of ahasuerus the king over 127 provinces and mordecai was not rewarded but when his time came the bible says that night could not the king sleep i'm saying this because god is about to open the book of remembrance <laughs> hear me there are some of you who have been part of the success story of many people you have contributed to the rising of many you have helped to take shame out of many but you have been forgotten in the name of jesus i bow my knees to the god of my covenant don't kneel down i'm the one kneeling down i pray for you between now and the next three months if god be god be remembered in the name of jesus be remembered in the name of jesus be remembered in the name of jesus that night could not a hazard of sleep and he said bring me the chronicles when they brought him the chronicles he saw where mordecai saved his life and yet was not rewarded and he said who is in the chamber her man was there and he said what shall be done to the man who does this her man thought he was the one and so out of the abundance of his selfishness he gave a recommendation he said do that immediately can i speak to you there are some of you who are at this conference it looks like you are nobody's ignored but i stand by the grace of god and i declare may what happened to mordecai happen to you <laughs> hear me the bible says let god arise and let his enemies be scattered when haman coordinated the honor of mordecai he returned back broken to his wife and he said wife look at what happened to me and he said uh -uh, mordecai is a jew esther is a jew you are in trouble he said this one has come to get you because there is a covenant that protects them can i speak to you anybody that has mocked your god and fought your covenant may what happened to her man happen to them in the name of jesus christ i want you to go back home today with this consciousness that the lord has restored to me both things and years you are barren here trusting god for the fruit of the womb i want you to not just expect one child expect twins expect triplets in the name of jesus christ and may i lend my voice with the pastor and the leaders to encourage you please do not miss tomorrow morning session for anything it's a conference it takes a sacrifice but every session is worth your while and worth your coming open up your heart and ensure that you are around and invite as many if there is no space if you have to climb the roof climb and sit there in the days of jesus christ 
everybody who came had something to go back with for tonight may the lord bless you may the lord honor you in the name of jesus you will not need to tell people you came to church the testimonies that begin to happen will tell people that you met god in the name of jesus christ god bless you and see you tomorrow hallelujah hallelujah let's step forth our hands to the man of god and begin to prophesy into his life the lord have used him mightily for us today let's ask that the almighty god will refill him back let's ask that the power of the most high god will rest upon his life upon his ministry begin to pray for the man of god that the almighty god have used for you tonight Please open your mouth and pray, 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 pray. God have used him to release mighty blessing upon us tonight. Let's bless him back. Those that water you must water them back. Please, let's pray for this man of God. Let's pray for greater grace, greater anointing upon his life, upon his ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, we want to bless your name. What a great God you are. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your son, your anointed, that you have used for us tonight. We bless your name, Jehovah, for your grace upon this life. Daddy, I say our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your heaven shall permanently be open unto this son of God in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, almighty Father, that you will refill him back. Mighty Father, those unction that you have released through him tonight, Lord, return back hundredfold into his life in the name of Jesus. We pray, my Father, my God, as you use him all over the world, we pray, Lord, that your anointing will continue to increase in his life. Your grace will continue to increase in his life. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will uphold you to the end. You will never look back. As the Almighty God is using you, the Almighty God will continue to uphold you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible there declares in Proverbs chapter 4 when you read from verse 18 that according to God's intent for man the path of the just even as he advances in life and through life should be as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That means in God's economy, a man should not have a better yesterday. It should never be that your yesterday becomes better than your tomorrow. The path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. What I want to teach you this morning very briefly is a key that can open closed doors Amen. but let's discuss the concept of doors for a few minutes a door is an authorized system of access a door represents an authorized system of access you may have heard me say it once and again that if a visitor enters through your window he's inside your house but he's not an authorized access the authorized access when a person is welcomed when we came into this beautiful auditorium we came in through the door imagine seeing me jump from the zinc i'm in here the roof now 
but i'm not welcome so a door represents an authorized system of access doors represent opportunities doors allow for movement the presence of doors listen carefully doors allow for movement when opened if a door is opened it means you have access to advance if a door is closed it means you are restricted now listen carefully when a door is open you can move in and out freely if this door is open i can walk out at will and return back at will but when a door is closed it brings limitations it brings delay it brings frustrations when a door is closed even though it is there let me tell you something else about doors doors midwife seasons connecting a season and the next are doors the same way this door is midwifing this auditorium and the passage outside if i want to get to that passage i will have to go through this door so doors spiritual doors midwife seasons when you are living a season into another season you will encounter a door and if you do not have the key that opens that door you can remain in certain seasons almost forever is god speaking to us first thessalonians chapter 2 please and verse 18 this is a prayer meeting let your heart be fired up read with me please paul is speaking now to the church in thessalonica ready one to read wherefore we would have come to you even i paul i tried once and again but your blessings wanted to come to you it kept trying to reach you breakthroughs wanting to come to you he tried once keep that scripture there please and again he says but satan so that satan can be behind the closed door of a man and stop that door from opening you keep having dreams that show advancement you keep having prophecies that decree that you should move forward but these doors remain closed why because satan can become a resistance i desire to have come to you your breakthrough is speaking i desire to have come to you your next level is speaking i desire to have come to you the next level of oil on your life the next level of influence the next level of fire the next level of increase the job you are looking for once and again i tried but satan hindered us <laughs> revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8 please pay attention this morning revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write this thing saith he that is holy and he that is true listen carefully and he that had the key of david what does that key do he can open and when he opens no man can shut and he can shut and when he shuts no man there are doors when you open someone else can shut it but there is a key that when you hold when you open that door no power in existence will sustain the ability to shut it first corinthians 16 first corinthians 16 from verse 8 and 9 first corinthians 16 from verse 8 let's go to verse 9 but i will tarry at ephesus it says for a great door and effectual is open unto me but i'm still not able to pass through it why there are many i have seen in my visions that god is opening me to a greater level of ministry a greater level of spiritual exploit a greater level financially but let me tell you something 
one of the ways you confirm that you are on the right mountain is the presence of giants if you go to a mountain that does not have anything there run away because whatever attracts you also attracts the devil satan is interested in everything god is saying when it comes to you he wants to find out what has god said i am lifting you that becomes his next assignment to stand and inhibit your rising so there are doors that can limit men but there is something that we can do to doors hallelujah there is something we can do to doors because i sense in my spirit that there are many people you are ending seasons spiritual seasons financial seasons like i began to teach yesterday but you must be trained to know how to open closed doors so that you can step into a new level let me tell you if you disregard what i'm telling you you will spend your life recycling the same seasons they did not take the nation of israel 40 years over a journey that they would have covered in 40 days the bible says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them why because they do not know the way to the city not because there is no city they do not know the way to the city so jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 says to stand in the way he says and to ask for that old path where is the good way and when you have found it walk in it make advancement in that direction and you will enter your sabbath you will find rest for your souls if we are together say amen, amen. matthew chapter 7 i love jesus my goodness my god matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 jesus is teaching in what we call the beatitudes it was a mentorship session he was having introducing the people of the day to the kingdom life he was exposing them to the way that the kingdom operates please give it to us verse 7 ask he says and it shall be given to you seek and you shall find but when you come before closed doors knock don't discuss knock and if you truly knock it leaves you with a promise that that door will be open are we bible students so jesus is teaching us what to do with closed doors now that every time you come before a closed door you must know how to knock there is a way and there is a skill that you use to knock closed doors even if that door did not open for your father even if that door did not open for your mother even if that door did not open for anyone in your lineage you can come with an understanding and there is a way you knock that door and my bible and your bible says it shall be open verse 8 for here is the law verse 8 say matthew for everyone how many people did he say men of god did he say people in worry alone everyone that asketh will receive everyone that seeketh will find and everyone my goodness that means there is nobody here who should remain the same because this blessing is for everyone there are things in the bible that are for certain people but there are things that are for everyone when it has to do with opening closed doors everyone can be a benefactor it says everyone that knock it it shall be opened i want to show you how to knock closed doors this is my assignment this morning seeing that if you must make advancement midwifing between seasons in your life you will meet closed doors if you master what i teach you this morning i would have completed my assignment successfully in this city the bible never said use your hand to knock there is a skill by which we knock closed doors i want to show you that skill and then we pray pray in the spirit in one minute 
Ke la parakatoze de brende ke te baladaba. Shege te bredia. Yes, a closed door is about to open. I assure you, age-long doors, doors that have refused to open, will answer now because it's time to advance. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 11. The mentor Jesus is about to teach us how to open closed doors. Luke chapter 11, please. We'll read the first 10 verses, but the verse of emphasis starts from 5. And it came to pass, please look up and pay attention, that as he was praying, so what is the subject matter here? Prayer. In a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. We notice that when John was mentoring his disciples, he taught them something about prayer. But you've not taught us anything about prayer. And Jesus said to them, when you pray, say. So prayer can be taught. A man can be taught to pray. When you pray, say our Father, which art in heaven. I've done a teaching on this. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom. Come, thy will be done as in heaven so in earth we're reading give us this day our daily bread next verse forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil now the discourse starts pay attention and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go to him at midnight and say friend lend me three loves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and i have nothing to set before him this is shame this is embarrassment i'm making progress but now i've met with a situation i need help he says and he from within please go okay he says and he from within shall answer now watch what is happening i am outside but my help is inside midwifing my outside and inside is a door and now i do not know how to pass that door the bread i'm looking for is inside the house the friend who is my destiny helper is inside the house and i am here standing outside jesus is teaching us what to do the friend said trouble me not the door is now read your bible don't trouble me the door that should be open for bread to come the door that should be open for your helper to come is now shut and my children are in with me in bed i cannot rise and give you verse 8 hallelujah 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 i say unto you though he will not rise jesus is teaching us how to knock and open closed doors he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity the word importunity is the word persistence the capacity to stay and remain and not bend what will happen he will rise and give him how many how many therefore this is the formula i say unto you again ask amplified says ask and keep asking seek and keep seeking and you shall find it says knock and keep knocking and the door shall be open unto you verse 10 the last verse for everyone who asks and keeps on asking receives everyone who seeks and keeps on seeking finds and everyone who knocks and keeps on knocking now listen carefully so jesus has given us a very classic narrative i'm on my journey through destiny and then i find out that in the other side is my lifting in the other side is a new anointing in the other side is a new dimension of grace but midwifing my current realm and the realm i intend to access is a door and yet to access that door 
the door is shut colossians 4 verse 3 who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down and every ocean roll to the lord of lords i will praise adonai from the rising of the sun till the end of every day praise adonai all the nations of the earth all the angels and the saints sing praise colossians 4 verse 3 champions cathedral read with me one two read without praying for us also that god stop 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 don't rush there are doors only god can open the holder of the key to close doors please keep that scripture we need to look at it there's something we pick there who opens closed doors god has a key that can open even ancient doors doors that refuse to open for those who went ahead of you your own assignment is that there is a way you can pray this is how you knock on closed doors you knock on closed doors by calling the attention of the one who has the key to that door i may not have the key but i know the one who has the key and i can call upon him and the bible says call upon me and i will answer close doors pray for us that god would open unto us a door in this case a door of utterance but it can be a door of favor it can be a door of lifting is someone learning this morning last scripture and we begin to pray james chapter 5 apostle james began to teach us again speaking on how to close and to open verse 5 james 5 verse 13 13 13 it says is any among you afflicted he says let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms uh-huh the bible says is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up and if he have committed any sins they shall be forgiven him now pay attention it says confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed then he tells us the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much next verse he now uses an individual to personify the power of prayer and its ability to control the opening and the closing of doors follow carefully elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are the bible says he prayed talk to me he prayed knock and keep knocking knock and keep knocking he prayed earnestly that it might not rain i hope you know that between the earth and the atmosphere there is a door that is the door that shuts rains and it is the opening of it that brings rain the bible says he prayed that it would not rain and that door became closed for three years and six months and when it was time for him to open the door what key did he use he prayed again so if you prayed for yesterday's victory to come what do you do for tomorrow's door to open again you pray again he prayed again that the door be opened and the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit the ministry of prayer with understanding 
is one of the master keys that opens closed doors especially doors that satan is directly behind it causing a resistance i have learned this in my life i have learned this in ministry the challenge is that many believers are not given to strategic intentional continual prayer it's the reason why we stand before closed doors for so long for many years and it seems as though god is powerless concerning such situations when you truly know how to hold on to the four horns of the altar and to pray the bible leaves us with an assurance that even ancient doors can be lifted do you know something there are times that your prayer becomes so powerful the door is not open it is broken why is it broken so your children will not have to pay that price again if i only open the door sometimes i may pass but what happens to my child psalm 24 verse 7 if you're a christian i'd like you to shout this scripture one two read lift up your heads uh -huh. hold on hold on the king of glory wants to pass but he does not want to pass alone so he didn't say doors open he says doors be lifted get out of the way so that as i come out i now become the first begotten let many be able to come doors can be open but doors can be broken he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder hear me look up please you only need a key to a door that has a padlock and has a space for key but there are certain doors that do not have a space for keys at that point you don't need a key you need the force to break it have you seen them seal an entrance when the doors require keys you can pray and God can give you the wisdom the keys the principles to engage and the doors open but there are times you stand before doors and there is no provision to slot a key there is no padlock there is just a mast of resistance at that point you do not need keys you need to pray this prayer lift up your heads when they got to jericho the bible says the fence of jericho was so fortified they didn't need jericho to open they needed to shut it down and flatten it and with one loud blast i understand you have praise sessions you have prophetic sessions by this night and your praise night maximize those moments because as you lift up your voice in praise and in worship i tell you there are doors that will crumble before you jericho was an altar what sort of a place is that that nothing goes in and nothing comes out there is nobody who builds a house without a place for passage but jericho was short nothing goes in nothing goes out this morning we have come here as i wrap up my session with you there are doors that need to open there are doors that need to be broken in any case all doors must open are we together how many doors how many doors i hope you know when it was time for the nation of israel to leave egypt when the heat was getting hot pharaoh started negotiating he said okay this is what will happen we will allow the men to go but the children stay behind and moses said no way if i am leaving my children will also follow he says as for me and my house 
so your prayer this morning is not just for you alone while we are praying let your children be there let your family be there some of you you are the first genuine christian in your family at that point you don't just need an open door there are doors you are going to smash to pieces this morning and make up your mind hear me there are families where you will never eat until you become a slave you can travel abroad for decades you return back and your future looks like yesterday he makes his ministers his angels spirits and his ministers flames there was a great man of god who said no matter how mad a man is he does not enter fire by mistake no he's not that mad so three things will happen this morning as we pray number one we are going to take our time to engage in serious prophetic prayers prayers over doors some of you doors of admission have refused to open are we together some of you doors of children doors of breakthrough all kinds of doors doors of finances doors of spiritual advancement up today down tomorrow no passion no fire i desire to come to you once and again some of you have businesses the door is open physically but spiritually the door is closed can i tell you this you can be in a city but in the realm of the spirit you are outside that city because the riches and the blessings of that city is it not in your bible it says blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord a city can reject a man you are there but nothing is answering to you you buy a land it becomes a source of trouble you send your child to school every trouble is there just when you want to drive out in the morning you, you get into a trouble all kinds of things there are doors that can open is someone tired of his current level listen if you are not tired of where you are there's no this meeting is not for you but there are people here even spiritually you are saying lord i'm tired i know you have called me there is an unction upon my life there is a grace you have sent me and you gave me a commission over this city i'm tired of this level of anointing you have called me to walk in the healing anointing and yet nobody is getting healed through my life you have called me to be a prophet and every prophetic word i give looks like a lie you have called me to be a kingdom financier and yet no door is opening you have called me to be a mother that bets generals and yet barrenness is eating me up can you open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute are you praying Shaba <laughs> hallelujah 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 in the name of jesus christ first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 we are praying my spirit is fired up first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 and samuel said unto the people 
it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron men don't just move forward there is a force that comes from the Lord are you ready to pray father in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that in this season every mountain every closed door stand in my way scatter in the name of Jesus lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray every mountain every mountain every mountain every door in the name of jesus the son of the living god be open a father be open every mountain be scattered now and every closed door be open be lifted be open be lifted pray 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 doors midwifing my new season doors midwifing new realms new dimensions of power new dimensions of grace new opportunities be open Jesus in the name of Jesus Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 please don't be distracted don't be distracted Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood that means listen the physical things that are happening are not where the problem is the man annoying you in the office is not really the problem behind the scene there are spirits controlling men the one refusing for you to move forward just sign a document and let me go there are spirits keep that scripture there fighting things physically is a waste of time we wrestle not against flesh this battle is not in the realm of flesh and blood all of a sudden the helpers of your destiny seem to be forgetting you someone is making them forget you the Bible says but against principalities powers rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places say in the name of Jesus I decree I declare by the blood of the lamb every power standing the way to my advancement caused by ancestry bloodline foundations I come against you in the name of Jesus lift your voice and pray I come against you I come against you every resistance every power 
in partnership with humans, in partnership with systems and structures to frustrate the purposes of God over my life, over my advancement. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. name of Jesus in the name of Jesus first Kings chapter 18 we'll begin our reading from verse 45 something is about to happen listen this was when the heavens refused to produce rain the Bible says it came to pass in the meanwhile that on prayer Elijah had invested in prayer the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was great rain and Ahab rode Ahab seemed to have gone ahead of Elijah it seemed like Elijah was experiencing delay but something happened in verse 46 oh may that be your miracle help those under the anointing the Bible says and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah Everybody shout speed. speed shout it again say speed. speed there are times that life has gone ahead of you there must be grace not just to advance but to advance on time and catch up the Bible says and he guarded his loins and he ran before Ahab even to the entrance of Israel father in the name of Jesus every delay suffered in time past I receive a grace from heaven to run to pursue to overtake to take over lift your voice and pray grace for speed grace for speed speed of accomplishment spiritual speed speed in your career The hand of the Lord. Pares kete leke te brandos koto praske. Eka te kete pronto koto praka te kata. Skada baraka te brandas kata baka tos. Oh yes, oh yes. The hand of the Lord upon my life, bringing speed, advancement, speed. Ten years in one year. Ten years in one year. Ten years in one year. Ten years in one year ten years in one year ten years in one year Jesus 
in the name of Jesus are we still together listen listen praise the Lord now listen to me one of the forces that controls advancement and even speed is the force of favor now listen please favor is when someone is willing to invest his time his credibility his resources to see that you rise on time it's a system of acceleration you may have heard me say who hates you in this life does not matter but who likes you matters who hates you does not matter but i can tell you who likes you matters you know why because all blessings come from God through men to men it does not just come from God to men it comes from God through men men can be doors themselves doors are not just blocks human agents can be doors gatekeepers are doors they can choose to frustrate you or they can choose to cooperate with you Esther chapter 2 someone is about to receive a grace for favor please listen hear me listen to me the number one reason why people prosper and advance in this kingdom behind every tearsome testimony behind every strange advancement of men i can tell you this is the favor of god it's true You have been sleeping wake up now because what you are about to receive can define the next decade of your life i have seen people listen the bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night i have seen business people ceos productive sincere people very gifted but there is no favor on them i have seen music artists anointed people when I heard their songs, I said, why is the world not hearing you? No favor. There are skilled people. There are artists. There are people who have drawn me portraits of me. And when I saw what they did, I said, you shouldn't be at this level. It takes more than skill to excel in this kingdom. I want to show you a secret now that will give you advancement. Esther chapter 2 when the king banished Vashti please pay attention and there was need for a woman who occupied that position they gathered all the women across the 127 provinces and there was a little villager called Hadassah from Shushan and her uncle Mordecai said why don't you go to Paradventure the king may like you Esther 2.15 that young girl was there among the many people i show you what distinguishes you among the crowd because what you are looking for others are looking for it too there must be a grace on your life that distinguishes you especially in a continent like ours now when the turn of esther the daughter of abihai the uncle of mordecai who had taken her for his daughter was come to go on to the king listen carefully she required nothing but what hey guy the king's chamberlain the keeper of the women appointed what happened esther obtained favor in the sight of how many listen if it is favor the only person who cannot respond to you is a blind man favor works with the power of sight provided men see you there is a compelling anointing now watch this when you read the preceding verses let's go to 16 we'll end at 17. so esther was taken listen carefully to king ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month which is the month tebeth in the seventh year of his reign there was an oil that Haggai gave her keep rubbing this ointment on your body 
other women were learning how to attract the king but Hagar said I have worked with the king I am the one who keeps his women I know what the king wants let me give you a kind of oil forget about what these women are doing keep rubbing that oil on your body after one year go before the king and she heeded to his advice the Bible says verse 17 and the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti listen there is an oil there is a grace I call it the Esther anointing it can come upon an individual and you go where they drove you yesterday and then you are back to that same place and there is this charm like aura that you carry are you ready to pray father the grace for favor let it come upon me lift your voice and pray the grace for favor Grace for favor. The grace for favor. Sala prada gata branda gata balakato. The grace for favor. Don't be tired of praying, your life is changing. The grace for favor. In the name of Jesus, the grace for favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen. We have three more prayer points and we're done. I'm still speaking on favor. Exodus chapter 3 verse 21. This is how you know the favor of God is upon you. Are you ready? One, two, let's read together. In the sight of the Egyptians. What is the proof? It shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty emptiness has an explanation it is proof that the favor of God is not upon your hand emptiness emptiness have you heard people say I know this one I know the chief judge of this place I know this one we even act together with the governor there are people who know everybody but nothing comes from there to lift you I know the manager of this place I know this great man of God we used to be together we were neighbors no don't be like Jacob there were angels ascending and descending near him but none of them was talking to him just because you are close to a door does not mean the door has opened are you ready to pray you are going to cause the spirit of emptiness listen 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 we are Christians when we make these demands is because we love the Lord and what comes from us will serve his purposes so we are not afraid to make these petitions we are not some carnal people just wanting to glorify the flesh say in the name of Jesus the spirit responsible for hardship and emptiness in my life I challenge you by the power of the Holy Ghost be gone now in the name of Jesus lift your voice and pray emptiness emptiness paro sekete prende gade belegata shekate bekate parakato prato sekete 
Scatter bread, legate, broscate, legata. Ebrecate, paruso, socoto, bradegate, cateleva. I challenge emptiness from my life. I challenge emptiness from my business. I challenge emptiness from my family. In the name of Jesus, are you praying? Hallelujah. 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 One last, one last prayer over the issue of favor. A scripture God is just putting in my spirit now. Psalms, I think that Psalms 44, verse 3. Psalms 44. Let me show you there is a grace that establishes men in a territory. They got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them there are many people who want to make advancement and be established thank god for the grace to pay rent but lord i'm trusting now that you will establish me it will not just happen just by savings alone <clears throat> father i have five children six children three children and now it's time to send them to school but i need the wherewithal let me show you the key please keep that scripture they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but your right hand thy arm and the light of your countenance how did you do it because thou hast a favor ah. Hear me, you will never, I'm saying this to everybody, but particularly the men in this church. The real secret to establishment is the favor of God. Can I tell you this? The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is loyalty to the hearts of men. When men love you and are willing to invest their time, their credibility, you can have money and not be favored. The proof of favor is when men can appear and come and say we will help you david was in the cave of adulam and there were certain men who came and said oga our assignment here is to stand by you till you become a king that leads me to the next prayer point are you ready to call the helpers of your destiny men can be doors you can pass through men to new levels in your life my life today is a product of the ministry of destiny helpers there has to be someone anointed commissioned authorized to hold your hand watch this let me use this gentleman you see where he is he desires to move forward to come to this realm but it takes someone already here to say give me your hand and he will help you there is no destiny helper who comes on their own they are called hear me some of you this is why you have been fasting and praying and say lord it's not difficult for you to lift me the person who is there is not seeing you there has to be a grace that connects you to your helper please hear me don't just be excited for nothing these things these prayers are destiny altering prayers there are four levels of destiny helpers that if they do not show up in your life you can never rise i've done a teaching on them but let me just give you in one minute our time is up number one the first category of destiny helpers you need they are called divine connectors they don't have the solution you are looking for but they know who can help you yes, hear what i'm telling you the slave girl did not have the power to heal naman but she knew how to recommend him to the prophet yes, the key to receiving from those kind of destiny helpers is discernment because they will come in forms that you may not appreciate them it may be a bike man who gives you a handbill of a crusade a handbill of a conference and that handbill you come for that conference and you encounter grace that changes you 
the key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment that's why it's good to honor all men don't honor only blessed people don't honor only great people god will use the least likely people god can use your security man to be the one to connect you somebody know somebody who knows somebody who has what you are praying for are you learning this morning the second category of destiny helpers that you need in your life they are called men of influence there are times you need the gatekeepers the captains of industry whether they are born again or not let me tell you something there are people that are not castable they are gatekeepers you can't cast them if god wants you to pass through that door he will make them like you when a man's ways pleases the lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace because there is an office they occupy if they refuse to let you pass you can pray all you can yet you will not pass how will joseph rise if pharaoh did not love him hear me please it's not enough to know big men you must pray that they know you men of influence are men who by reason of their sacrifices by reason of their credibility their skill and their service they have earned the loyalty of a territory men believe in them one signature from them help this person can end 10 years don't downplay men this is a world of men the heaven of heavens belong to the lord but the earth has he given to the sons of men believe me when i tell you if men decide to fight you only god can help you don't ignore men believers have done this if you praise god and say i don't need any man just because you are showing his sovereignty you are right but if you say i don't need any man just because you think you can do it without men you are joking even god needed men are we together it is in the multitude of men not treasures that the king's honor lies hear me you need men of influence there has to be someone who can endorse you there has to be someone who can carry his credibility of 20 years and leverage it on you whether you are in ministry whether you are in music ministry you are in whatever sector struggling on your own and trying to rise past step you will spend your whole lifetime trying to rise you need someone there are times you have the gift oh joseph but you are in the prison you need somebody already in the palace to speak for you and if you do not have a pharaoh to send for you you may remain in your dungeon the bible says and the king sent for joseph not god the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon there is one person who can decide to invest his credibility on your life and in a matter of months your life can change am i wasting your time the third category of destiny help us because i want us to pray and i don't just want you to pray blindly i want you to pray with intelligence the first category of destiny help us don't forget divine connectors second men of influence third gifted men you need to pray gifted men to your life gifted men conserve your resources they conserve your energy there are many companies that have so many staff hundred people and yet there are ten people who can deliver the same results gifted men the largest corporations in the world are people who have mastered the art of putting together a team of absolutely brilliant and phenomenal people you need gifted men the bible says if the axe head is blunt there will be much energy there will be much labor you need people who are cunning who are skilled that's why when saul discovered david he said you play skillfully come the palace is where you should be you need gifted people the last set of destiny helpers that you need if you must advance and make progress in this life they are called burden bearers what betides any man who does not have burden bearers these people don't like you because of your fame 
they are not looking for your results their assignment is not to move you forward their assignment is to keep you from going backward burden bearers there are the ones who cry with you when things go bad few of them among the maze of psychophants who loiter around you because of money and fame there are a few people who sincerely love you they will pray for you they don't just stand with you they die with you that's what Ruth told Naomi your God will be my God your people will be my people can I tell you this I presume that there are many people who God has helped and blessed and established in this church let me give you a powerful secret you're a businessman here you're a captain of industry you're a senior executive let me give you an advice I want you to take a very careful inventory of the people who are really burden bearers in your life do you know why many great men plunge to depression and even death because when things go wrong in their life suddenly they find out that everyone who has loitered around them was there just for what they will get our world is largely driven by interest and selfishness but there are a few people who are there not for what they can get there are people who will cry with you they will die with you they will receive the blows for you don't ignore those people they may not be educated they may not be smart but they are gifts from God so when you are now praying for destiny helpers you know what you are praying for that number one Lord send divine connectors number two send men of influence number three send gifted men but in all your sending oh God also send burden bearers lift your voice and begin to pray pray and receive the ministry of destiny helpers receive the ministry of destiny help us ask the Lord to send you divine connectors ask the Lord to send you man of influence the Lord to send you gifted men. Ask the Lord to send you burden bearers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now I want to pray for you. I want to speak over your life. I truly believe in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I know there is power from heaven listen that can come upon a man my life today is a testimony of what happens when the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes upon you Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 just help those under the anointing I want to pray for you whether you are outside whether you are inside the Lord sent me here through the ministry of your treasured pastor the angel over this house hear me there must come a time in your life when you encounter genuine grace grace is not just for men of God it's not for those in ministry it is the force that causes men to excel and to make progress are we together now yes I wish we had the time so I tell you stories stories I am a product of many anointings myself we have taken by the grace of God from the wells of they that have gone ahead of us it's a relay no man invents this anointing there are all kinds of graces that are responsible for feats of advancement Acts 10 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power that anointing made him to go forward he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed of the devil hear me I know you have a great business 
but until that business is anointed it cannot excel you have a great family i know you are gifted but even your gift has to be anointed for it to serve the purposes of the kingdom i'm trusting that within the next one or two minutes that something from heaven will come upon your destiny and will alter the course of your life that you will go and write it that here at this conference seven days of glory something happened and it changed my life are you ready to receive father i pray standing in faith you don't have to kneel just stand i stand in faith with pastor emmanuel and his wonderful wife the leadership of the champions cathedral and in the name of jesus there are people here who desire to make very strategic advancement i speak to you the oil my god i'm just seeing like a river flowing this is what i'm seeing the river flowing help them a river in the name of jesus the anointing for the next level of your life take that grace take that grace take that grace in the name of jesus the grace for signs and wonders you are in ministry here i release that grace upon you take that grace prayer fire may that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus christ hear me there are women here that god is empowering with unusual grace i release my i stretch my hands may that grace locate you right now may that grace locate you right now help them please let me pray for those in business it takes more than buying and selling to excel there is an unction that can come upon your enterprise you don't have to come out i stretch my hands everyone in this church following online you are in business i declare the power that excels may that grace rest upon you now may that grace land upon you now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now please hear me hear me there's an impartation going on there is a grace for visibility there is a grace for influence and visibility just because you have what to offer does not mean the city will receive of your grace there is a grace that gives men visibility hallelujah now listen very carefully Acts chapter 12 we are wrapping up I want I have to pray that grace upon you before I leave the grace for visibility Acts chapter 12 let's start from verse 5 the Bible says that Peter was kept in prison is it not doors that are used to close prisons and gates the Bible says Peter an apostle who had potentials to do so much in a city he was locked up in prison closed with doors but prayer was made without season of the church unto god for him uh-huh when herod would have brought him forth that same night listen carefully while peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door there were doors to that prison next verse behold the angel of the lord came upon him and light shined in the prison and he smote peter by his side raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off his hands verse 8 and the angel watch this now he said guard up thyself bind thy sandals and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me in other words you will not remain in this position again follow me let's begin to advance verse 9 and he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel he thought he was he saw a vision 
verse 10 hallelujah the bible says and when he was past the first and the second door what there means doors watch this there were three doors i want to give you a mystery god taught me about influence and visibility there was the door that brought him out of the prison but he was not yet out from that environment then he came to the second door and then he came to a mysterious gate called the iron gate that opens to where there is a gate that opens to the city the moment that gate is open all you see before you is the city there is a gate that controls visibility and influence when that gate is opened then the city can see you there are many great men and women of God here God has walked upon you and he's sending you to the city but the city is yet to receive of the investment of the spirit there are CEOs uncommon entrepreneurs politicians help her please help that woman because that's what is happening to her you will marvel at the testimonies you will come and share on this exalted altar can I pray for you father the door and the gates that opens up to the city the anointing that controls influence and visibility upon everyone under the sound of my voice may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now whatever business you are involved with we give it a voice and we command the city to hear your voice everything that has relegated you to the background gifted but limited we open that door and we push you forward in the name of Jesus we push you forward we push you forward we push you forward we push you forward in the name of Jesus finally let me pray for your spiritual advancement if all you have is money if all you have is a flourishing business flourishing career wonderful family and your relationship i'm not just talking of new birth your passion and fire the highest thing that you must prize in life is your relationship with the lord it says that you prosper even as your soul the kind of prosperity that takes away your passion that the higher you rise in other areas the more you go down spiritually it's not recommended for believers no that after 30 years you are still standing serving this Lord Jesus that in the end of your life you will be like Abraham he says and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him in all things I declare whatever has killed your zeal for God your passion for prayer fasting your word life your passion for the house of God character in the name of Jesus like the hair of Samson grew back let there be a miracle of restoration for you association in your life that continues to make you abort destiny I break you away from those associations in the name of Jesus Christ I declare like never before a fresh hunger for God a, help that man a fresh passion for prayer a fresh love for the house of God and any spirit sitting on your spiritual advancement I clear them out of the way now let me prophesy over this cathedral 
and over the workforce uh, i spoke with your pastor a bit and he told me the marvelous work amazing what the lord is doing in and through this cathedral and you are here you are not part of this cathedral or you have your own church you can receive by faith everything that is alive grows there is nothing that remains at the same position therefore champions cathedral hear the word of the lord in the name of jesus i prophesy from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory to glory to glory in the name of jesus may this church raise mighty men of influence in this city may this church raise captains of industry in this city may this church raise the next set of prophetic and apostolic giants in this city may this church raise financial apostles for the kingdom i pray for the entire workforce every faithful worker committing every partner every financier i stand in faith with your pastor and i call upon the god of my covenant may he bless you may shame and reproach be far from your life i came here yesterday and you honored me together with your pastor his lovely wife in the name of jesus christ the grace that you have honored may it speak for you We pray and agree for the remaining sessions we have up until the Thanksgiving on Sunday. Let it be greater levels of grace. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. The Lord keep you. It will only be for you from glory to glory. Therefore, in closing, I speak to you that in this season and by the power of prophecy advance in jesus name move forward in jesus name surpass ordinary standards in jesus name thank you very much the lord bless you the lord increase you